peace of God be unto you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Murder. Gospel delivered to the world by the Holy Spirit of Truth, leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. They that take the sword shall perish with the sword. First lesson, St. Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 to 22. Second lesson, St. Matthew chapter 26, verse 52. Third lesson, Revelation chapter 13, verse 10. Quote, To some of us it appears that there are many men of God in this world, and we begin to wonder why, in spite of all these men, there is still all that much sin in the world today. Our first lesson shows that from the beginning of the world, the supposed men of God were not really what they claimed or what people thought them to be, because they were all guilty of murder. And we know that of all sins, murder is the greatest. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. The greatest commandment ever given by God, which is, Thou shalt not kill, is the main reason why all other commandments are given. Man is the most precious and the work of God, and the destruction of man's life in whatever way or by whatever means compels God's anger and his justice of measure for measure against the destroyer and the killer. Therefore, Anybody who does not want his own life to be pestered or destroyed should not pester or destroy another person's life. But if you, a man of God, is a murderer, what remains of him to turn to Satan? As a murderer, he is already dead, and his work of God is also dead. So are they all dead who claim to be doing the work of God. But who have all committed murder? And since they are dead, who are supposed to destroy sin, sins live and abound. Therefore, the sin of murder makes it impossible to find one man of God ever since. To be a murderer, one needs not necessarily shoot with gun, cut with machete, or slay with the sword. There are several other ways in which murder can be committed, broadly by thought, word and deed. If you kill by the word of mouth, it is the same murder as by poisoning, beating with stick, bombing or slaying with the sword. If you bear grudge against anybody or say to anybody, rocker, you have committed murder in your heart and by your speech. Whenever you speak any type of evil against anybody, you have committed murder. If you have any intention to kill, if you sharpen your knife, prepare your gun or other weapons of war with intention to attack and destroy life, even without actually making the attack yet, you have already committed murder. Apart from the actual preparation, the intention is sinful enough to be the offense. If you have any secret meeting or to plan how to attack and kill any person, you have already committed murder by the mere planning. Yet today, what appears to be the universal handiwork of everybody is the piling up of weapons of war to attack, kill and defend. And defense is our lame excuse. Before you say that a man is a real Christian, have you examined him to see that he is not in any way guilty of murder? If we commit murder and deserve to suffer as murderers, why then should we doubt the way things have been going wrong with us? God does not want us to suffer. In this wisdom, he knows that any person who commits murder, either by thought, word, or deed, must suffer exactly the same way and die exactly as he has caused 
to suffer and die. That is why he has given us a commandment that we should not kill. If anybody kills in self-defense, he is a murderer before God, though the world may acquit him by the law court. All the military tactics used by soldiers to kill in attack or defense amounts to murder. In anger, most people speak without restraint, trying to defend themselves or revenge. If somebody offends you and you utter some words like, I am going to show you, you have committed murder. If your properties are stolen and you have in mind or actually go to a sorcerer to find out the thief to harm him, you have committed murder. The native doctor who tells you, come, let me kill that thief for you, is guilty of murder. If you accept his proposal, you are guilty of murder together with him. If you place Juju on anything to prevent thieves from stealing your things, you have committed murder. If you invoke the Juju to harm the person who has touched or stolen your property, you have committed murder. If in the law court you pass judgment that somebody be hung, you have committed murder. The person who prepares the gallows commits murder in the same way as the executioner. Why then should we still doubt the way things happen to us daily? We are suffering like murderers. We should not blame it on God or on, on, or on our neighbors, enemies or juju. We are reaping what we sow. When you give somebody medicine to drink or inject him, and if that medicine or injection kills him, you have committed murder. If you commit abortion or consent or aid the abortion of your daughter simply, simply because you would not like her to be dismissed from school, you are a murderer. When you say that things are not good with you and go to kill yourself, the sin does not end in your committing suicide. You have committed murder. You are guilty of murder. No matter the way you commit the suicide, either by hanging, drowning, or poisoning, you are a murderer. Even if you think to, if you, even if you think or say that life does not favor or that life is not good with you, and that you better die away, you have committed murder by the mere mentioning of these words. If you think like this in your heart, it is the same murder that you have committed. In these things we have sinned, and the wages of sin is death. Do all you can to ensure that your fellow human being has life. It is in this that Brotherhood of the Cross and Star has taught you to bless those who curse and persecute you and pray for them. Agree to be accused falsely. Carry every burden and accept to suffer for the sake of the cross and the glory of God. And in the end, you will earn eternal life. This is the meaning of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. There is no need for us to revenge. Our forefathers before us revenge and are all dead today. You may say, let me do whatever I like, for whatever a person does, he must die. But I disagree with you. You cannot kill as you like. Whoever kills must die. Who does not kill will not die. If you should say because... Abraham, Moses, Joshua, David, and Solomon all died to support your statement. You are mistaken. Did not Abraham, Moses, Joshua, David, and Solomon kill? Were they not all warriors? And if they were, what sort of God's work could they have done? What sort of man of God could any of them make? Did they not deserve to suffer and die as murderers? which they were because they suffered and died as murderers their children are also bound to suffer the result of their parents 
since for the scripture says for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me any person who commits murder hates God we are today suffering because of the sin of murder which our ancestors committed in Acts chapter 7 verses 6 to 7 is recorded what God said to Abraham and God spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil for 400 years and the nation to whom they shall be bondage will I judge said God and after that shall they come and serve me in this place Pharaoh and his subjects who committed murder against the children of Israel finally perished in the Red Sea we have seen how all men in the past suffered because of murder today almost everybody is suffering because of the same sin yet even those who are converted Christians today are very often heard saying to somebody who offends them were it yesterday when I was in the world I would have done you something this also is committing murder by word of mouth but my Christian friends do not know this though they go about with their Bible preaching and calling themselves men of God since the world began have you ever seen a murderer with his family living in peace whoever takes the sword must perish by the sword it is by committing murder that we lost all our blessings and earn for ourselves eternal curse and damnation Jacob said to Simeon and Levi Simeon and Levi are brethren instruments of cruelty are their habitation O oh, my soul come not thou into their secret unto their assembly mine honor be not thou united for in their anger they slew a man and in their self will they dig down a wall or seed be their anger for it was fierce and their wrath for it was cruel I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel again since Cain killed his brother Abel the whole world seemed to have no other work than killing themselves the punishment of our fathers who committed murder before us is on us already yet we are seeking to add to this by committing more and more murder ourselves if our parents died vanquishing war why should we go to plan revenge to wipe off their blame to wipe off their shame revenge is murder whatever the reason the person who is guilty of it should die as a murderer if our parents had suffered because they did not know God or know how bad it is to commit murder in any form how much greater will our punishment be who now know all this and still commit murder in Luke it is written and that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself neither did according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes but he that knew not did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes for unto whomsoever much is given of him shall much be required and to whom men have committed much of him they will ask the more if we commit murder again this day it is deliberate and we deserve greater punishment see the numerous churches and prayer houses in the in, on earth today yet death does not stop why as long as we continue killing with our thoughts words and actions in the way mentioned earlier in this gospel we continue to set in cycle death that goes and comes back to start again with ourselves but 
it would be possible to stop that if we would stop killing. If we would accept to bear the cross and suffer wrongs without complaint and die for, for love without resistance, we would pass from death to, to eternal life. But all those who kill will be killed, and their children too will suffer death from the same sin unless somebody amongst them sacrifices themselves to suffer wrong and death without resistance for the coming generation to live and have peace. So, whatever you suffer, do not commit murder, and you and your children and grandchildren shall have life. Remember Jesus' remark that of all that are born of woman, none is as great as John the Baptist. Why is John the greatest of them all? Remember also that David, Solomon, Moses, and Joshua were regarded very great before John. Why did Jesus not confirm that these men were so great, but instead acclaimed John the Baptist as the greatest of them born of woman? The reason is that John did not commit murder in any way. He, he killed nobody by thought. He did not pronounce any evil word against any person. He did not listen to anything said against him by people. He was accused and imprisoned by Herod. He did not care to defend himself or say any evil word. In the prison, his head was sent for, chopped off into a plate, and brought as Herod's birthday gift to his daughter. John died without resistance or commotion. Supposing you were John the Baptist, would you not begin to defend yourself by killing and being killed? What we call self-defense is not known to God. Why then do most of us resist instead of surrendering ourselves to God to use us as he likes, even if it pleases him to make people ill-treat us? After all, it was not David or Moses or Solomon who were warriors defending themselves that Christ proclaimed great. It was John the Baptist who yielded meekly and who yielded meekly to persecution and death for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. The same John did not commit murder. Self-defense has never saved any person. It is the symptoms of fear. But Christ said, Fear not them which is not able to destroy both soul and body in hell. If we were Christians, and workers of God, really trusting in God alone to keep or destroy our lives, why should we fear and try to defend ourselves so much as to kill? Let us examine all those whom we call the men of God of old, whether they did not kill in war using either weapons, word of mouth, or thought.